What's up guys, Eric here, back again with another car review of The Flash, season eight of The Flash. Don't know why you guys like these, but you do, so here we go, we're gonna do this again. This isn't gonna be a long one, uh, this episode was pretty much very self-contained, with the exception of some character development and some stuff at the end, but it really was, out of all of the interlude episodes we've had, this one felt the most like an interlude to me, and I think it was a fun episode. It was a lot of like throwbacks to like old school Flash stuff, and I absolutely enjoyed that, and it did focus around Barry, which is something that I've been asking for, for for a while now since like Armageddon happened. So all of those are good things. This is episode 16, I think. I could be wrong. I don't know. The title and number is gonna pop up on the screen right now. I don't know why I can't think of it. Whenever I get in my car, it's like I forget the episode titles. Anyway, this is the episode where Barry gets really old. Uh, that's the whole premise of the episode. And we had a couple of side things that were going on. We had a really cool cliffhanger, which I'm gonna talk about that, um, of course. Uh, first, let's talk about the stuff that I really loved. I liked that it was a very centric episode. I liked that it felt like an old school Flash episode. There was a lot of things where investigation had to be done, like everybody was using their intelligence to figure out and solve the problem. I thought all of that was really, really, really solid. And I think for the most part, all of the supporting characters actually did what they were supposed to do and really not only did all their own little individual things, they also helped uplift Barry as a character. And that's something that I really had been missing on The Flash, so I was glad to see that back again. Special effects, effects, special effects, special effects, VFX, all really good. No issues with that either. I thought that was really solid. Um, again, I think every character was pretty strong. Let's start out talking about the Joe storyline um, with Singh. So, you know, Joe and everybody, they're dealing with the fact that Iris is missing and they can't really do anything about it. So there's a, the stress level is at high for everyone. And, you know, I've got some questions about the way things were handled in this episode in terms of like the Iris stuff. Uh, I'll talk about that in the negatives. But as far as like the stuff with Joe and Singh, I thought it was very good. It was fun. Jesse really pushing hard. Uh, Singh and him uh, have great chemistry together. I did think it was a little weird that Joe was having trouble with like a electronic vacuum when he everyone he knows knows how to do stuff like that so I, I guess it was kind of like sort of honing in on the fact that you know Joe wanted to do something for himself and of course the struggles with Iris and with his family and everything all of that sort of coming into play so I think there was a reason for that um, and I think it really did push Joe's character in a good direction and of course it was great to see you know sing back again and uh, yeah solid week for Joe I think he had a great storyline no real complaints about that, thought that was really good. Uh, let's move over and talk about the stuff with Barry because that really was the core of the episode, Barry getting old. So uh, Professor Orloff, who is a character from the, I think it's Orloff, is a character from the comics, throwback character. I don't think that he had a lot of stories. I think he had a couple of stories here and there, unless I'm thinking of another character. Um, Anyway, he steals this machinery to build a device that will make him young and make everyone else old. And so the, the whole premise of the episode is Barry gets hit with a wave from the machine. He starts to age up and um, it affects him and his powers and his every everything in his life. It affects the way he thinks about things. He, it affects, like just the fact that he's aging up is changing everything about his powers, his memory, his decision-making. It's, it's affecting everything and it's pretty obvious. And so he has to struggle through that while also dealing with the fact that Iris is obviously not there and just trying to be the savior of the city. And in the end, he does manage to pull everything out and stop the, the professor and this device by running around real fast and I mean, it, it was a cool scene. It, <laughs> there's kind of this like thing about the Flash just running fast to beat things because he is the Flash. I kind of wish there was a more technical way they wrapped that up because they did spend most of the episode like actually using investigations and science and stuff to like figure everything out. So I, I wasn't too, too happy with that, but the scene was cool looking and sometimes the cool factor for me means more than the actual uh, the resolve. So for me, I was good with that. Thought it was fine. I thought Grant gave a great performance and I really enjoyed the storyline. I think that this whole idea of aging up and, uh, and you know, losing control of yourself, I, I think it spoke a lot to a lot of different issues. And the one side character that I have a complaint about is Cecile. And it's not necessarily that she was bad in this episode. Like, I don't think that Danielle did a bad job with Cecile, like portraying Cecile. Um, it was kind of like some of the things she said made me question like the writing. Like when she's like, why are you worried about Allegra? She can handle herself out in the field. And that's 
absolutely unequivocally not true. We know she can't. So that statement was dumb. The other thing was she kept asking Barry what was wrong. Like, are you like not paying attention to what's happening? Iris is missing and he's aging up without any resolve for that. And he's having issues with everything and you're asking him what's wrong. On top of that, she acted like she couldn't tell what was happening, but yet in every other episode, her powers allowed her to determine exactly what somebody was feeling and exactly their motivations for doing it. So it's, it's just this weird thing. Like Cecile to me is the hardest character to write and also the character that they get wrong the most often on the show. Like I legitimately feel like they get her wrong so much on the flash um that i just I, I wish they would sort of reel in her writing and just make it better like i saw on social media a lot of people were like this is the best to seal episode we've ever had how she said stupid stuff she was and then she gave barry the story about like the superhero that was her i think her grandmother and she was talking about her grandmother getting old and accepting all of that and i'm like no like why would he want to accept that? You want to fix this problem. You don't want to just accept that you're getting old because that it makes no sense here. But they wanted a touching story and a touching moment to sort of help connect her and Barry together because Joe wasn't there, Iris is gone, and she was the next in line, and, and Caitlin wasn't there. So I thought that was a little silly. Okay, the last bit I want to talk about is the Caitlin stuff. So when all of this was happening with Barry, I found it a little weird that no one tried to reach out to Caitlyn. The one person who probably has the most abilities to fix this, they did not reach out to her. Now, I know she was dealing with trauma. I know she was supposed to be with her mother. I get all of that. But everyone is dealing with some stuff right now, and they could have at least reached out and tried to figure out, like, hey, do you have any theories? Do you know anyone that can help? Is there something you can do? But absolutely nothing uh, done there. No reaching out, no nothing like that. At least I don't think there was. To be honest, this episode, there was a couple times where I got up to fix myself food and stuff, so I wasn't like totally 100% in it. But I will say that it felt a little weird to me that they didn't address that. And then at the end, they're, they're having like, um, they're having the situation where they're out, I guess because they had a rough situation, they decided to play D&D &D and have drinks or whatever. I'm just like, this doesn't feel right with what's going on with Iris. I know that they're supposed to show that that even when there's trauma going on, you need to make time for yourself. I don't know, something about it didn't sit right with me. That's just me. I don't think it was a problem with the episode. That was fine. It just felt a little weird to me. And then at the end, of course, Barry finds out from Caitlin's mother that she's not with her, which is what Caitlin told Barry. And then he goes to her place to find that she is playing mad scientist and trying to bring Frost back. And then, like, Caitlin does something that I thought was a little weird that they, that they even wrote this. And she's like, Barry, what would you, what links would you go to if you knew you could bring your mother back or your father? And I'm like, we already know, Caitlin. We know what links he would go to. And we also know that it's always resulted in problems. Flashpoint. It has been a problem. No one has wanted Barry to do it because they know that it causes problems, which is why you don't use time travel or you bring people back to life like this. You don't. You just don't. That's that's kind of been established. So the fact that she even brought it up, I was like, that feels like you forgot that Flashpoint even happened. You forgot that Barry has attempted to bring people back. And it's been awful when it's it's never gone the right way. So I'm just like, why did they give her that line? That felt really stupid to me. Okay. With that being said, Barry decides that he's like, look, this is not good for you. You need to move on. She doesn't want to move on. So he destroys everything and takes the mirror gun with him. And this is a boss move because now he's established that he is not on board with this and Caitlin should move on and she doesn't seem to be very happy about it. And so that is what we're going to move into, uh, I guess, the next portion of the season with the Caitlyn stuff is dealing with this. So I will say I felt Caitlyn's story was better this time. I liked that they pushed even further with the mad scientist stuff. And so I was very much uh, okay with that. But look, I'm going to give this episode um, a B. I think it was a B episode. Uh, that's it. I'm at work. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Take care.